right. Uh, so, uh, so the topic today is uh, something that is very contemporary uh, and uh, and often uh, uh, is a, a subject of great distress to everybody, uh, and that is the human large carnivore conflict. Uh, so today, what we'll do is we'll uh, talk a little bit about uh, what this conflict is, what it means, and uh, and especially with regard to uh, the carnivore conflict. Uh, what are the various uh, kind of uh, hypotheses and why, why and how it happens? And then we'll take up uh, three case studies uh, from three uh, different regions, which which are completely different landscapes, therefore completely different problems. Uh, and then uh, we'll basically summarize what are the responses of the forest department uh, to to manage that conflict, and then in the end, to see if there are any learnings out of out of all that. So uh, let's uh, start with uh, uh, conflict. So the first thing is what, what is conflict, and uh, the conflict is uh, so it's it's been variously uh, defined uh, what conflict is, uh, and I've chosen two definitions today. And one is an interaction between humans and wildlife, resulting in negative impacts on human society, economic and cultural life, and the conservation of wild animals, populations, and environment. So this is something that WWF uses very frequently. And there's another one, which is uh, by the IUCN Conflict Mitigation uh, Task Force. And their, their, con their uh, definition is human-wildlife conflict occurs when animals pose a direct and recurring threat to the livelihood or safety of people, leading to the persecution of that species. So now I've, I've basically highlighted some key operative words in each definition. Now, the first thing is interaction. Now, uh, for, for conflict to happen, there has to be interaction. So that is the first, that's the, that's the first uh, operating and or keyword. The second is interaction can be an interaction without kind of any result, but so it has to be negative. So a negative interaction, an interaction that affects humans, human, WTF chooses to call it human society and economics, IUCN chooses to call it livelihood, but it has to be a threat, threat to life, livelihood, which the third operative word is which in turn leads to persecution of the species, which means it is that interaction on the one hand is damaging to the livelihood of or the people themselves, the lives or the livelihood of the people. And on the other hand, it leads to persecution of their species or it is a threat to that species as well. Right. So, so the crux of the problem, the crux of the definition, then is that it's a it's a negative interaction which affects both parties negatively, right? Now, uh, very quickly, when did this conflict begin? Is it something that has happened recently? Is it something that has been there all over, all all across? So, let's discuss this very briefly. Now, some people say that, oh, look. Uh, Conflict was there even in the prehistoric times uh, because, uh, anyways, uh, humans used to go and, and kill animals. Or animals used to kill humans, so there, there was conflict there also. And that that really brings us to a very 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 important and very very interesting uh, standpoint. So we'll come to that in a, in a short while. But but my take on this is, and I think a lot of other people also believe, we can't qualify that interaction as conflict, right? A conflict happens when you have your own resources and that re those resources then are attacked, damaged, or jeopardized. So, so for that to happen, I think we can define conflict after domest domestication. Now, when we started, when we stopped our hunting gathering, habits when we started, when wheat was domesticated, when we started cultivation, 
then we protected a crop right and and any animal coming in to attack that crop that used to end in a conflict situation because we were protecting a resource that animal was coming and eating our resource right so so th so that's why I'm, what i'm saying i just I just told you a short while back that we'll come to one very interesting uh, point, which both the definitions that we were talking about, which both the definitions seem to have missed. It is it is the location. There is there is no operative word on where the conflict happens. Now, for instance, I walk into a national park or a tiger reserve, and I get attacked. Does it constitute a, a conflict? No. Why should it be a conflict? We are, we are infringing into an animal's territory, animal's home. So is this conflict? In my in my opinion, it is not. If a tiger strays into a village, then yes, it is conflict. But but here, what is happening? What is happening is because because it is such a political issue. It is such it is such a big issue uh, which affects. Of course, it affects lives. It is, uh, it, it, but it also involves a lot of policy people, a lot of, a lot of politicians, a lot of legislation. So, therefore, everybody wants to simplify it. Technically, when a case happens inside a, a proscribed area, that is a sanctuary or a national park, right? That case is not liable for compensation because that is not conflict. But now what is happening if anywhere a, a human dies through a tiger or, or wildlife, people give compensation just to quieten this, ease the situation, right? So, so, so one thing is, I think location, something on location is important to be added to these definitions. And secondly is, in my opinion, uh, Conf we can use the word conflict post domestication, not pre domestication, because pre domestication, anyways, we were kind of half animals. So it was competition rather than conflict. Mm -hmm. Right? So, uh, what, uh, very quickly, what, what are the types of conflict, of in, especially in the Indian context? Uh, the largest is, are, are, the, are the most important in terms of in terms of news coverage, in, com in terms of publicity or negative publicity, carnivore human conflict takes the maximum space. And amongst the carnivore human uh, conflict, tiger is the maximum. Because on the one hand, the government spent so much money on tigers for the conservation of tigers. And therefore, anything that, hap that happens to tiger, then it comes in the news. Second is leopard. Leopard is a silent operator. It, it does equal or more damage to human society. But leopard, for because, just because it's, it's not as kind of high profile as a tiger, it doesn't get that kind of a, but, but in parts, for instance, in Mali and all, in, in Uttarakhand, in, see, it gets, it get, gets a few, uh, fair share of problems. Bears also are, are actual, uh, uh, are animals that actually cause a lot of conflict, and uh, it is, and and their conflict is largely suppressed and largely uh, undermined. Uh, but it's it's something that causes and terrorizes people. Uh, their conflict uh, and and actually alters and affects their lifestyle significantly. And of course, there's some industry incidents of bulls. Uh, attacking children and, and taking away children, but it's not as prominent as the, the herbivore human conflict is something that that is associated with huge uh, economic losses. Uh, it may not necessarily end, result in the death of, a, of an animal or a death of a human, but it is, it is uh, involved with huge uh, economic losses, especially to marginal farmers, small marginal farmers. They, they, they get to lose uh, out on a lot of their crops or their their labor and hard work or savings. Uh, an elephant is the prime contender there because once an elephant gets into a farmland, it will ruin everything. Then Nilgai, wild pig, their reeses, that is something that is actually caught the attention of uh, 
the ministry as well. And in fact, ministry has, uh, in, in response to uh, such a huge cry raised uh, because of the wild pig and Neil guy conflict, that they declared those as vermins uh, yeah. and, and, yeah. and let it let it let the state wild wardens decide as to uh, where they actually allow for selective culling and, and killing of, of, of those uh, two species. It's it's something the wild pig is something that is. Uh, kind of uh, coming up as an extremely strong, uh, extremely damaging uh, kind of uh, animal to our cropland. And uh, and it's also very difficult to stop because it it can get under the fences. You you put up a power fence, it will dig under the power fences and also it's, it's pretty difficult to actually keep off and it multiplies very quickly. So, so that is uh, these, and the largest, uh, conflict that happens uh, in India are the snake bites, uh, and, and we don't talk about it all. Again, I don't know whether it should be classified under conflict or not because it's something that it, it, uh, it, there, is, there is no kind of a stake for a snake in humans' lives, except probably might be using a burrow or using a, a pipe to lay. Uh, Eggs or to lay young ones, but uh, but other than that, I don't see a, a stake a stake uh, for a snake in humans' lives. So whether it should be called conflict or not, but the thing is, it, there are two parties here. If you go by that definition, there is an animal, there's a human, and both the parties suffer as a result. There are at least fifty thousand deaths, human deaths, happening every year because of snake bites, which is which is huge. Now coming to conflict, and uh, and we 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 talking about uh, carnivore conflict. So so let's let's try and uh, figure out what are the why the conflict happens and what are the predisposing factors of conflict. Right now the the, the primary uh, reason of of we might we target tiger conflict is fragmentation of habitat. You see tigers basically. Uh, they, they would prefer large inviolate spaces. Uh, where so what happens when you when you fragment a habitat? What happens? Uh, the the patch to edge ratio becomes very highly skewed in favor of the edge. So so you where edges are dis, uh, basically exposed to human populations, right? So larger the edge, larger the so the the higher the probability of of uh, conflict happening. We, we are seeing this, uh, and I'll show you once we reach uh, the case studies. I'll show you why this is why this is so, and why fragmented habitat can actually cause a lot of. Uh... Second is, of course, uh, which is a natural uh, kind of a biological uh, need for for animals is dispersal, and and when the tigers disperse. Especially the dolphins, when they disperse, uh, they will explore uh, because they they are driven by driven away by the dominant tiger males. So they will be driven out, and they will explore and experiment, explore the area and experiment with the prey. And sometimes unknowingly, because they are not trained hunters, they would mistake humans for their prey. And sometimes they would eat them. Sometimes they just kill them and leave them. So, so dispersal. If you see a, a, a large majority of uh, conflict cases in India are caused by young three-year-old adults, sub-adults, not knowing what to hunt, what not to hunt. But, but there's another, there's another connected, uh, 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 basically, uh, factor to it is, is uh, the female. Once the female has a litter, when she shelters the litter away from the male, because because in in a lot of cases males actually will attack the cubs, try and kill them, for the tiger for for the tigers to come back into. So the female, the tigers and the cubs will move away very often towards the periphery of the the forest, and and where an interaction could happen. If the tigress is detected, uh, because that time she becomes very fierce because she is 
defending her litter and therefore she becomes vicious and and does attack and and you probably if you if you remember last year avni was something that uh, that was splashed in newspapers and she was actually a tiger who was trying to protect her cubs then uh, infirmity is another uh, uh, hypothesis that that is that is propounded and it's it's of course very natural to to comprehend that infirmity is something if if a tiger becomes very old and is unfit to hunt naturally or uh, uh, even a, a healthy relatively healthy young tiger loses a, an incisor or loses a couple of claws and also so the the hunting becomes inefficient and therefore it finds it easier to to can hunt on uh, basically uh, slow moving prey like cattle and like cows and and when cattle and cows when the tiger gets exposed to cattle and cows obviously then it will also get exposed to humans i i think one of the biggest biggest factors uh, these days of, of increasing conflict is now reducing for humans tigers use and generally all animals they are shy of humans but in certain areas i you see uh, they they are just not scared of humans because and, and because because in the past uh, humans were seen as uh, a threat humans were seen as a threat and therefore tigers or any animals used to avoid humans largely because either either they would hunt them or they would shoot them thinking of the wild but now this is not happening therefore animals seem to have lost the fear and therefore they are approaching to very close you you would have seen videos of tigers walking through villages or railway tracks in national parks for instance how how close they approach the jeeps because they don't they don't fear them at all and there's a lot of research actually happening in in south africa now uh, on on how uh, how to uh, uh, provide what what you call uh, negative reinforcement so a punishment with with association of humans right earlier earlier punishment was probably death so they would they would be they would they would associate a loud noise and a bullet and death but now they can't so people now are researching as to what could be that that negative reinforcement that would help them manage conflict create a degree of scare among the animals negative reinforcement could be for instance i'll give an example of uh, the 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 easiest example is power fence for instance mm -hmm. so a solar powered fence uh, an animal touches the fence it gets a shock next time it will not because because then they know that by touching the fence they'll get a shock right and even if you leave the power on then for only 50% of the time it still will be as effective as 100% and because it has already got that negative mm -hmm. so they are trying other ways such things can be done you know we we for instance we tried we experimented with uh, for wild boar uh, infrared triggered uh, sprinkler system and that that sprinkler could actually if it if it could sprinkle water with chili powder or something so so just that association would probably could probably deter uh, an animal to actually uh, uh, use that area and and, and trip that line and of course there are uh, aberrant behavior there are just certain uh, certain uh, tigers or certain animals uh, that after uh, it's like in humans it could be a, a, an aberrant behavior and turns a man eater and, and 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 starts eating uh, humans so but that is such cases are very few if you see uh, uh, i would say 10% of the 10% of of even less than 10% of all the tiger cases uh the tiger has not consumed the prey at all it just killed and there are various various reasons why they kill they might as i said they might females might be defending their litter or it might be an accidental encounter or several reasons 
but but tigers uh, very very well, very small proportion of tigers actually are mammals so so very quickly going to uh, all india deaths by, uh, so as you say uh, for some reason 2016 uh, the human mortality peaked uh, uh, tigers and uh, and that was that was 16 a year which is very high uh, but you see the increase is inevitable because because our tiger numbers are growing our tiger numbers are growing protection measures are are keep becoming better and and therefore uh, it's bound to happen there'll be more dispersals there'll be there'll be more such cases of counters but then 16 to 18 and 19 they seem to have learned uh, the, the management of conflict seems to have grown better and let's uh, we'll discuss those as to how forest various forest departments tackle those uh, issues now again uh, when, when we talk about uh, where is the by state where is the where conflict is maximum of course this Bengal uh, so it's, it's maximum yeah, yeah. by Maharashtra then Uttar Pradesh and then Madhya Pradesh right and uh, now if we again uh, take number of human deaths versus tigers present in the state so so the highest is you will have 1.1 deaths to every tiger 1.1 human deaths to every tiger in west bengal that is the highest and then uh, it comes down to uttar pradesh uh, assam and uh, madhya pradesh 0.3.2 so 0.3 deaths per tiger uh, so basically, uh, even in terms of number of tigers and in terms of uh, human deaths versus number of tigers, uh, West Bengal is has the highest rate. So let's go to a case study now. So uh, the first case that we take up is is Central India. Now the problem with Central India is uh, Central India. Uh, uh, the picture that you're seeing on the screen is is rather zoomed in picture of central indian landscape uh, so if you if you consider an area uh, uh, pinch uh, sorry kana then south of kana then uh, pinch bor melghat satura then come down to tadova and then from here uh, uh, you can you can actually go down to then uh, um, in andhra Mm -hmm. and Navigaon. so so these are these are small tiger reserves small national parks and sanctuaries i think the largest probably might be pinch because uh, it's, there's a pinch is a contiguous patch of forest pinch madhya pradesh and pinch marsh for the 400 plus also 500 and some kilometers Kana might be in equivalent bore might be so 700 but uh, but by and large the reserves there are not very large. Uh, considering that a, a tiger's uh, average range size is about 100 square kilometers. So what happens? Then? Uh, and of course, and that's one of the reasons why uh, we, everybody feels that in the central India, tigers must be must be conserved as a meta population, where where the population is held in in small subpopulations, uh, which are genetically connected with each other. So now, genetic connection means that there is there has to be some connectivity uh, physically to allow unhindered movement. Uh, so if you if you look at if you look at uh, this is the case of Tadoba, and uh, if you can, uh, which is a very popular uh, uh, reserve in in uh, Maharashtra, uh, popular because. Uh, of the ease of sightings, uh, tiger sightings, right? And, and a lot of tourists go and a lot of videos on on the social media actually have come from uh, Tadova as well. Now, outside Tadova, this is Tadova, and outside Tadova, this area is the Brahmapuri forest division. And the cases that you see in Maharashtra, high, high conflict cases, most of them have happened here. Okay. Now, I was, I was, I was talking to you in the morning, uh, sorry, uh, a short while back on fragmentation. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see this habitat, 
Now, had it been a contiguous habitat like this, forest habitat, the patch would have been undisturbed and large, eh? and this would be the edge. Okay. Now, what has happened? It is fragmented. The edge has begun here. This is the edge. This is the edge. This is the edge. This is edge here. This edge here. So, so the the edge has increased. Now, what has what happens then? Is you have villages here. You have villages here. You have villages here. The habitat is fragmented, and you see the, the the light green patches where there are habitations. Now these become enclaved. They they are surrounded on three sides, on four sides by forest. So so when a tiger moves out, it's bound to encounter a village, and very largely and 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 fortunately so, a tiger is nocturnal, right? So so luckily we sleep at the night. We are all all inside. And the tiger can move out and walk through. Even if it's farmland, it will walk through undetected. Uh, but sometimes, unfortunately, certain tigers get, uh, they don't reach their destination before dawn and they get detected. But I, but I feel that for every 10 tigers that cross, maybe one tiger or for every 20 tigers that cross, a tiger gets detected and comes into conflict. Now, uh, in this area, the conflict as it was very high. So, so we we last we in 2014 we did a estimation exercise, and and as you see, uh, you see the on the on your left uh, bottom, you see a, a solid green patch that is Tadova, okay, and then to the right and above, that is your Brahmapuri forest division, okay. Then there is a gap. And that there is green cover and some dots on the right side, right? Now the gap is the Van, Van Ganga River. Okay, and let me go back. You see this river? Yeah. Yeah. So the gap, that gap is this Van Ganga River. Okay, right? Now you see uh, these are the tiger numbers. This is a tiger occupancy, basically the probability, a very high probability of. Now in Dhamburi, the situa situation is that. Tigers are found everywhere. As you as you see, all the grids were occupied, and all the grids or most grids had yes. above 0.9 probability of detection and occupancy. And when we when we surveyed that area in 2014, we got individual captures of 24 tigers. Now WCT did a reassessment in 2017. The tiger numbers had gone up to 76. Now, why is it happening? No, the, the problem is it is largely territorial forest. It's a reserve forest. It's uh, FDMC, that's the Forest Development Corporation of Maharashtra, who actually keep forests, but also fell them. So this FDCM clear fells forests. So, so one day you will have a nice jungle habitat. And okay. it's actually happened. it actually happened that we had Tiger, tiger. Actually, we camera trapped tiger in one jungle, and after one week, the jungle was completely gone. So, you find tigers in what you call wasteland, scrubland, which barren. You find tigers there also. You find tiger in the periphery of the villages. You find tiger in the farmland. So, what is but there's limited prey. There is some sambar and there is some wild pig. Mm -hmm. But 76 tigers with an increase. Is not justified by the amount of prey that is found there. So they are subsisting largely on cattle. So what is cattle doing? Cattle is because of the cattle, the prey density is artificially inflated, right? And and therefore, therefore, tiger numbers, the resources are resources are rich, and tiger litter, uh, the litter size are three to four. So, so there's a huge increase in tiger numbers in Brahmapuri, and we did some uh, kind of uh, heat map and all. So, so of course, I mean, it's they they approximate what the tiger numbers are. Fairly so mm -hmm. simple, but but uh, so so what has been the response of forest department? Forest department means forest department all and working with NGOs and all. So one is removal of problematic animals. So that is that is the that is the easiest way they think. Okay, fine. A tiger has killed one human. 
and last year there was a huge uh, hue and cry two or three cases happened in maharashtra where uh, they then called an external a shikari to actually shoot the tigress oh, avni avni that was uh, became a very famous uh, case uh, at and the, and the issue with that see the issue is not uh, removing uh, an uh, a ban eater if it's if it's confirmed a ban eater there might be and and is it really a ban eater I mean, uh, of the six or five of the six or five people of the uh, had killed i don't think she had consumed any she was she was only being a good mother mm-hmm. protecting protecting her cubs so so uh, and and she and people happened to come in her in her path therefore she she killed them now was she fit for removal that is that is a, a, a question for discussion the second second thing that the forest department does extremely well and and the the, the maharashtra forest department uh, has an extremely good uh, mechanism and system of excretion payment it's the highest in the country for instance they get give 10 or 11 lakhs for every human that's killed whereas others still give three or five lakhs so so maharashtra is is highly incentivized in terms of 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 uh, excretion but they also give fairly large amounts for any cattle lost right now what is hap- what is happening is uh, anyway the cattle the precious cattle which is the milching cattle they'll stall feed inside their their uh, yard uh, but the other non productive cattle they let grow in uh, and graze right it's anyways unproductive now mm-hmm. if, the, if the tiger kills it they get 30000 rupees Okay. much more about the value of so what is happening is what no what is happening is see the the intent of the forest department is good because it is it, it is uh, to offset the losses by the people right now but what is happening here is is the farmer is getting his compensation huh? the tiger is getting his prey but it has caused an explosion in tiger numbers understand so so a goodwill gesture might actually be counterproductive and and really it is uh, when it's it's suggested that excretia should never be done in isolation excretia is a short term measure right excretia if people uh, don't understand the common word for excretia is compensation but we don't choose to use compensation because compensation you can't compensate anybody's life right. so excretion is a relief that you are saying okay fine we are sorry you lost and we'll give you 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs just as our comp- as as a goodwill gesture okay. help you so it's not comp- so compensation is a very bad word in that sense so uh, frankly uh, excretion has to be uh, Uh, accompanied by a, a mid term or a long term measure of of natural prey augmentation removal of cows uh, such like so 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 that so that you you get time so excretion gives you time basically to to put into place your uh, your uh, your uh, mitigation processes now we move to the second uh, side that's dudwa pilibit landscape now dudwa pilibit landscape as you see it's it's uh, look at dudwa dudwa is a very linear uh, park very narrow long park no room for and there is a hard boundary the sal forest of dudwa the very famous sal forest of dudwa they end and agriculture starts and this is something that is comes prone to conflict and and more so is is uh, when the when the crop is sugarcane the sugarcane approximates structurally the the classes inside the grasslands inside so for for a deer or prey the grassland inside or a sugarcane outside is no different and and therefore uh, we have seen in dudwa that there are there's 
there is abundant prey inside grassland, uh, inside sugar canes. So you will have hog deer, you will have wild pig. Uh, I don't think you you find swamp deer, but you find eel guy. So so there are there is abundant prey, natural prey for tiger. I don't I don't I don't say that it it resides there, but maybe a tigress with cubs might stay there for some time, or it might have a, a, a tiger might just move away from a dominant tiger for some time, but it gets prey, so it, it there is incentive enough for it to stay along. The problem with dudhwa is that dudhwa, as I said, is sugarcane, and there are very large land holdings, uh, but the landlords don't harvest themselves. They hire migrant labor. Right. Now, migrant labor, uh, and it's also something that has been studied, that that societies or tribes or, or people who are not uh, adept or who are not exposed to uh, wildlife cannot handle these challenges, right? So, so if you, if you see for tribes, for instance, they they handle conflict much better than when people or tribes, those that that have not been exposed. So, so these are people from Eastern UP, these are people from uh, Bihar who have come and, and they live in uh, uh, bamboo shacks. Uh, and therefore, uh, when you have tigers inside and uh, harvesting at the time of harvesting, they'll encounter, or, or even otherwise, they'll, they'll encounter and they'll, uh, there's mortality that happens. Pilibit is, is slightly different. As you see uh, on the left, there is this very long, Thin narrow patch coming out. So this is Pilibi. Now you look at the shape, and you can you can yourself imagine why conflict would happen in Pilibi. Pilibi has much more conflict than Tutwa. Uh, of course, this if you go down uh, towards the uh, left and and base, uh, the boundary is Katarniagat. That is another another place where uh, which is extremely high for uh, leopards. Leopard conflict is extremely high there. So, so, so here the situation situation is completely different to Central India. Here, the tiger, when it disperses, it is bound to to get into 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 conflict with the surrounding forces. Now we have we have had we have had uh, and uh, of course uh, uh, you would have heard the news of uh, tigers moving 14 1500 kilometers. Uh, in Central India, uh, so we have we have also had tigers coming from uh, Pilibit uh, and and moving down undetected to as far as Lucknow and Kanpur, right? And without disturbing anybody, just just using the shallow uh, dry rivers and drains, the scrub there, and and consuming wild prey, and and we have captured tigers from just outside Lucknow and outside uh, Kanpur. And and even even uh, once once it got it 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 spent about a month in in a in a large I think it's a, it was an ammunition depot or it was some seed farm fairly large fenced area with a forest and all with a little bit of wild prey and it took us about a month to actually capture it from there so so they 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 are actually very stealthy animals. And uh, they can uh, escape detection pretty easily. Now, uh, again, I see if you see the heat maps. Uh, uh, so, Pilibit, uh, south of Pilibit, Dudwa, and Kandaraniagat is something that actually scores pretty high in terms of uh, human mortality. And that. this is basically this is not all human mortality. This is number of cases. Uh, so, some cases uh, would have resulted in. Injuries, some cases would have resulted in deaths, and some cases would have resulted in just an interaction and, and tiger going away, uh, and a situation being averted. Now, as I said, uh, the, the problem is hard boundary in those without buffers, fragmented forest, and then cleared villages in Pilibit. Uh, the sugar cane being very contiguous. Uh, is, now, this is a this is a, uh, an image that is taken from WWF basically. Uh, and, and it shows that uh, the, the location of, of tigers within a buffer of, of uh, five kilometers outside 
uh, those wines. So there's a fair amount of tigers coming up. Uh, Pilibit also has a problem of a lot of people going into the forest uh, mm -hmm. to collect resources, to collect several other things. And, and, uh, and uh, a tiger mistaking them. See, we have, we have, we have seen it uh, in a lot of instances that tigers seem to mistake for some reason when it's when it's crouching when a, when a human is crouching on force so it's sitting down or it's so so the tiger seems to get confused uh, a, a, a man standing up and a man sitting down the chances of a man standing up and escaping are much higher than than a, a man sitting down uh, doing some work so what is the body part for doing uh, of course, one is is uh, the rapid response team. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we we have kind of uh, done a bit of work here in Dudwa, uh, and where we uh, the normally normally called rapid response teams. Uh, uh, Murli, do we have uh, do we have to close in five minutes? Uh, nothing like that. Please. We can continue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So so. Uh, so rapid response team is something that uh, that we have uh, we have uh, uh, modified, and our rapid response team basically is a, a combination of three skill sets. So there's a veterinarian, there's a sociologist, and there's a biologist. the The idea of an RRT is to preempt conflict, because what happens is uh, an RR, conventional RRT basically is becomes operational after the event, after the conflict has happened. Then, then whether you remove a tiger or remove something, so the role comes after the event has happened. But for this RRT, our RRT, we try and preempt conflict. And how does that work? Is when when a tiger is detected, right? Somebody raises an alarm or there's a tiger there. Our biologist goes and checks whether it's really a tiger or something else from pug marks from cam puts up camera traps and all and, and identifies and and uh, confirms what the what the animal is the sociologist role is of course talking to people and and uh, keeping uh, telling them to stay indoors or or not go towards this area or that area where the tiger is a large number of cases doing just that you allow a tiger to go out and go away without any negative interaction just seeing a tiger doesn't mean that it you will end up in conflict right so so uh, the rrt basically is something something different from a traditional veterinary rrt where you have a tranquilizer gun and who you dart and that is that our veterinary the role of our veterinarian and our rrt is the last if the other two fail then the last comes the veterinary now we also uh, started something that's that is uh, of, that's uh, something uh, 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 a new concept and that this was really started uh, in j and k kashmir is uh, or himalaya basically in mountainous area uh, now if a conflict happens in a village uh, at 3000 meters then it it takes two days to reach that Right, because you have to climb up and you have to climb up on foot. So, so the reaction time, because in conflict, the response time is ex extremely important. Uh, because conflict, you make or break conflict in the first half an hour. Right. So, so if the your, your response time is two days, then obviously uh, you you won't be ever able to be able to solve conflict. So, so, so we talk to people. And told them, look, this problem is yours. Comment ka the problem nahi hai na? Problem to apka hai. So would you want to help yourself? And majority responded positively and said yes. So that is that is where this idea of a primary response team came. Okay. Now, so the primary response team is nothing. It is a unit that is comprised of some important or influential local people. It could be a school teacher, it could be a local politician, it could be a sarpanch, it could be a forest guard, it could be anybody who people listen to, right? Now they are oriented 
and trained. Their ro their role is when conflict happens, just to report conflict. Okay, fine. A bear. We've seen a bear here, and in the in the orchard. So they will they will basically spread that news in the village, and stop the mob from being formed. Once the mob is formed, then the situation is out of control. So they stop inhibit a mob being formed. And in the majority of cases, this the situation will dispel because if mob doesn't form, animal will go back on its own. But in case when there is an issue, it escalates, then they will call the PR, their RRT, and then others will come and try and handle. Right. So it has worked pretty well. We have actually expanded the role of PRTs and also to, uh, trained them in uh, first aid, for instance. So, uh, and and they have in Qatar Niagara itself, where I told you there's uh, elephant con uh, leopard conflict, and uh, they've actually been able to save two or three children who, who had been taken by leopards. So they chase on on their own. They chase the leopards, and oh. then 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 gave first aid to children and, and actually uh, kind of uh, saved them. So so so. So PRT, and it's something that that uh, the government also has taken note of, uh, the NTC has taken note of, and they are also kind of asking for the forest departments to to start such such community-based uh, primary inter interventions uh, because they don't they don't involve animal handling, so so they can it can very very easily be done. And then of course Exegesia is something that the forest department continuously gives. The third uh, is Sundarban. Sundarban again is completely different, uh, which is uh, it's uh, a mangrove forest, uh, as as you know, uh, and that these mangrove patches are actually uh, interspersed with rivers and channels. Uh, so it's basically a delta. So so the habitat is a, is a com accumulation of islands. Uh, the the feature of of Sundarbans basically, as I said, uh, it's about ten thousand square kilometers. The, the Sundarbans itself, four thousand square kilometers in India, six thousand is in Bangladesh. Okay. And, yeah, and the population is approximately in the same ratio, forty percent in India, in sixty. I think India is about a hundred, hundred ten, and Bangladesh probably has a hundred and sixty, hundred and fifty something like that. Uh, now Sundarbans basically is uh, it it has uh, a fairly low prey base, natural prey, prey base, because uh, there isn't too much on these islands in terms of fodder and all, and and a lot of a lot of the islands they kind of uh, the water level fluctuates up to six seven meters up and down, so so the real dry part where you could, you could actually have grass. A graze for herbivores was very very small. Uh, tigers also uh, there are are somewhat different. They're smaller and yeah they're smaller uh, and probably an adaptation to being lighter because otherwise they would sink into the mud. And uh, we also done some work in, in on on uh, and of course as I said, the conflict is 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 fairly high. And so what is what. Uh, so, uh, mangrove forest in the network of rivers and channels, low and large human populations, and that is dependent on resources. Mm -hmm. So bas basically, uh, uh, Sundarbans uh, has a, has a has a very large population dependent on on honey, which they collect from inside, prawns and crabs, which again they collect from inside. Uh, now, as you if you if you I'll I'll, I'll Take you back. Now, if you see, uh, you see that yellow line coming down. That is the international boundary. Mm -hmm. Then you see one dark green patch, mm -hmm. right, coming right down. That is a national park. And then there's a wide channel, mm -hmm. right, and the areas uh, uh, kind of west of it, yes. right. Yes. That is that is the biosphere reserve, and 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 uh, that is the. Um, uh, buffer zone. Buffer. Yeah. So the tiger reserve is is completely complete up to you see those out uh, yellow tiger reserve is is complete until that. 
but the national park is only this nobody lives inside there are no villages inside the national park uh, but there are people living uh, on the islands near the buffer zone right so so sometimes what happens the problem is that that it's the tigers they used to they used to actually move from the buffer zone and cross villages mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. come into into villages and and attack people so that was one source of conflict but the but the other source of conflict was that 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 people go inside and get killed mm -hmm. and that is still the highest reason for mortality it's a, it's a very difficult area to patrol because because you need boats so all patrolling is done on through boats and then once you are inside once you, once you are traveling and patrolling a, an island there's very little visibility because the your grass and vegetation is is dense and and above your head so you can't see much so it's a it's, a, it's an extremely difficult area to patrol basically and therefore therefore it's very difficult to manage people's ingress now the government does give uh, uh, licenses boat licenses to to some fishermen to go inside and 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 for crabs and prawns and all but but there's a very large population of illegal uh, fishermen going inside and and getting killed and that is also one of the reasons why then they don't apply for because they don't have licenses and maybe that doesn't get recorded at all right so so the so deaths might actually be a lot more now uh, what has the best thing that the forest department has done is is they have they have put up a nylon netting this is this is unique this probably not happened everywhere or very few cases they have erected about a 105 km long nylon fence this fence is about 10 to 12 feet high and covers the forest along the national national park right the interface between the buffer and the national park with the result, uh with the result that it does not allow tigers to move out right there have been cases uh, in, in wi study where radio collared tiger actually swam 3 kilometers across the channel mm -hmm. so 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 they are so adept at at uh, their their uh, life with water the tigers in sundarbans uh, but what 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 this has done is if you if you see the this chart is uh, how many incursions uh happened before the net when the, when the net for instance uh if you see the net yeah was 50 kilometers and uh, there were incursions when it then this they the increased it to 100 kilometers the incursions fell suddenly so because because the tigers don't find a uh, room enough to see what basically what happens is you you stand at the edge of an island right and you see across and there is forest on the other side as well and mm -hmm. it's natural for tiger to move across and half a kilometer 200 meters 300 meters swimming across is nothing for a tiger so so they would swim across reach the other side and discover that it was a village uh, however the thing is the the problem still persists because uh, because as the livelihoods of people is dependent very largely on the park the we did try and uh, do, forest department also has done livelihood uh, providing alternate livelihoods but the incomes from from uh, the honey or the incomes from crabs and prawns is so much hmm. that for us every every family will will bring out at least two quintals of honey and it's also translates into good amount of money now now a, a good prawn catch for a trip to go inside would fetch a, a, a fisherman because these are big prawns would fetch a fisherman 6 7000 rupees now so so he makes a trip comes back with 6 7000 rupees and then he is happy for a week 10 days 12 days until that money is exhausted then he goes back again so so any livelihoods that or options that are given have to be so lucrative that they offset 
this cost, right? So that people don't take the risk of going inside, which is very difficult. Situations, the cause of conflict across areas is not universally, is not necessarily universal. There are some universal principles like dispersion, like uh, infirmity and all, but but there are others, for example, landscape could be completely different. Our responses to then um, managing conflict would be, could be completely different. Now, innovative solutions are something that that uh, is required. And for instance, netting was an extremely innovative step, and it has actually drastically reduced tiger forays into into parks. It was a very 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 innovative uh, move. And then uh, one thing that that uh, that our government still lacks uh, at the policy level is a strategy, a long-term strategy to deal with and manage conflict. Because, because we uh, are seem to be obsessed with numbers, uh, that we need to double our tiger numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, well, while it's fair to say that we'll double our tiger numbers, but do we have room for it? Or are we, are we then cognizant of uh, the implications of increased tiger numbers, right? Uh, so, so therefore, I I think I think along with uh, our our protection, which which is uh, intended to, which is aimed at increasing tiger numbers, which is fair, but then we also must have uh, a clear idea of of how we would then be dealing with the increasing numbers and therefore therefore uh, that strategy is is the need of the art people are trying but i don't think the government of india as of now has a clue of how to manage they have left it to the states to manage uh, there are very vague guidelines as to how a conflict should be managed but nobody talks about how conflicts can be reduced. These are all post facto. Once the event has happened, then how do you manage the animal? How do you manage this? How do you manage that? But how do you stop conflict from happening? There's, there are no strategies for that. So I think I think that is where our, our focus and emphasis should lie. So that, uh, because this, is, uh, this will be a, a, a natural fallout of conservation. A natural fallout of conservation is increased animal numbers and therefore uh, increased potential for conflict, especially if uh, carnivores would affect humans and, and uh, herbivores would affect uh, farmers and, and the crops. So uh, I hope you found this useful and interesting. And uh, thank you very much for, for uh, attending and listening to me. Uh -huh.